After almost 1,000 days on bail in Canada, Meng Wanzhou, the CFO of Chinese tech giant Huawei, attended her final extradition hearing on August 13th. The verdict is to be made in October. Contextualized within the deteriorating U.S.-China relationship, the Meng Wanzhou case can be traced back to as early as 2012, when U.S. intelligence agencies first flagged Huawei and ZTE as potential national security threats. In February 2018, a Senate Intelligence Committee hearing discouraged American citizens from using Huawei equipment, which the U.S. intelligence agencies claimed contained backdoor applications that would allow the Chinese government to spy on Huawei's international users. So far, no evidence of such applications has been released publicly. In March 2018, the U.S.-China trade war broke out. On August 13, 2018, Trump signed the National Defense Budget Act to prohibit the federal government from purchasing Huawei equipment. On August 22, 2018, a New York court issued an arrest warrant for Meng Wanzhou to stand trial in the U.S. On December 1, 2018, Meng Wanzhou was arrested by Canadian police in Vancouver International Airport while she was transferring planes. On December 6, Huawei confirmed the arrest, referring to it as a temporary detainment for unknown reasons. The Foreign Ministry of China intervened the same day, demanding Meng's immediate release. On December 7th, Meng attended her first court trial in Canada, where she was accused of defrauding multiple international institutions, most notably HSBC. Prosecutors said that the case against Meng stemmed from a 2013 Reuters report about the company's close ties to Hong Kong-based Skycom Tech, which attempted to sell U.S. equipment to Iran despite U.S. and European Union bans. In August 2013, Meng made a presentation at the request of HSBC in Hong Kong. The prosecutors argued that Meng's presentation had misled HSBC by concealing the true nature of the Huawei Skycom relationship which put the bank at risk of violating U.S. sanctions against Iran. According to the disclosed PowerPoint used by Meng at the presentation, page 6 writes clearly that, as a business partner of Huawei, Skycom provides support to Huawei's sales and services in Iran. Meng's legal team further argued that the U.S. misled the court by omitting this very piece of information, and that HSBC was never kept in the dark about the connection between Skycom and Huawei. Meng's lawyers said that the normal legal procedure should have been that the U.S. sues HSBC for violating sanctions, and HSBC then sues Meng for fraud. The fact that it was the U.S. directly suing Meng suggests the case was politically charged in nature. On December 10, 2018, the Chinese government arrested two Canadian citizens on national security charges. Though the Chinese government has never suggested that the arrests had any connection with Meng's case, the move is widely believed to be a political retaliation. On the 11th of December, Meng Wanzhou was released on a $10 million bail. On December 12th, 2018, when Trump was asked about Meng's case, he answered, If I think it is good for what will certainly be the largest trade deal ever made, I will certainly intervene if I thought it was necessary. On January 28, 2019, the U.S. formally issued an extradition request to the Canadian government and charged Huawei with 23 crimes, including theft of trade secrets, fraud, and Iran sanctions violation. Three days later, on March 1, 2019, Canada authorized an extradition hearing, marking the formal commencement of Meng's extradition case. On March 3rd, Meng filed a lawsuit against the Canadian government, accusing the latter of violating her constitutional rights by detaining and interrogating her before informing her that she was under arrest. On May 23, 2019, Trump said Huawei could become part of the trade negotiations. Meanwhile, the relationship between China and Canada reached a freezing point. In March 2019, China blocked most shipments of Canadian canola. In June, China blocked all pork shipments from Canada. In July, Canada postponed a decision about Huawei's building 5G networks in the country. According to Canadian extradition law, only those whose conduct meets the standard of double criminality will face extradition. Double criminality means the conduct must be illegal in both Canada and the country seeking extradition, in this case, the United States. On these grounds, Meng's defense argued that what Meng has done was not illegal in Canada, since Canada did not have sanctions against Iran at the time they arrested her. And so, they contended, she should not be extradited to the United States. On January 10, 2020, the formal extradition hearing began. 
Canadian federal prosecutors argued that Meng's conduct amounted to fraud under Canadian law and that the court need not take U.S. sanction law into consideration. On May 27, 2020, the court ruled that the charges against Meng met the legal standard for double criminality. On June 19, China charged the two Canadians it detained right after Meng's arrest in 2018 with suspected espionage. On November 16, 2020, another round of witness cross-examination started. Meng's defense insisted that Canadian federal police had violated her rights by passing Meng's electronic devices over to the FBI. On August 17, 2021, Meng attended her last extradition hearing. The presiding judge is expected to announce the decision on whether to extradite Meng in October. In a time when techno-nationalism becomes a global trend, Huawei, as the leading company in the field of 5G technology, was caught in the vortex of US-China competition, and the Meng Wanzhou case is inevitably loaded with political calculations. Regardless of whether Ms. Meng will eventually be released, the US-China trade war has proven to be more damaging than beneficial to both economies. It has also rendered individuals like Meng and the two arrested Canadians victims of great power rivalry. A timely closure of Meng's case therefore serves the best interests of all sides. For now, let's hope for the day when truth is revealed and the wronged are freed.